Well, hi there. So in this video, we're actually gonna be looking at problem set, uh, monopoly practice problem set number one. This is a typo in my problem set. And so it's our very first attempt to kind of practice a little bit with what we learned about monopoly in the previous video. So the first part just gives us a graph and says, let's answer some of these questions as we kind of look through what this graph is telling us. I know that this seems really, really scary and all these lines and everything, but it's actually a fairly common way that the AP exam is structured. And so I think it's good for us to kind of get some practice with what that looks like. So the first part and the second part say profit maximizing quantity and price. And that's always going to be MR equals MC for the quantity and then the demand curve for the price. So let's look on our graph and see marginal cost comes down and hits marginal revenue at point E. So the quantity will be Q1. And if I go all the way up to the demand curve to A and then over to P2, I can find the price. Very common mistake for students to say P6 is the price. Nope, the marginal revenue is no longer equal to the price. It's also a very common mistake for students to use these letters inside. If you don't actually use the price and the quantity letters, then you're actually not answering the question correctly. Total revenue ID four points. So it's going to be the equivalent of price times the quantity. So it's going to be this P2 that we just identified all the way to A over to Q1 and zero. So if you're kind of thinking about total revenue is, and I probably should use a different color pen here, is this big box right here, right? The great big box that I'm kind of hashing in a little bit because that's the equivalent of price times quantity. So I'm going to use P2, zero, because it goes all the way down to the bottom, over to Q1, Q1, and then up to A. And that's the rectangle in which total revenue exists. Total cost is that ATC line here at point D, right? So if I go total cost is here, and over, it's the area underneath, right? So this kind of smaller area, and how do I find total cost again? Well, it's the quantity we're producing up to that ATC, which occurs at point D and over to P5. So the ATC at Q1, we would actually say is P5, but the total cost is the area of that rectangle. So we're gonna say P5, and once again, it goes down to zero. It goes over to Q1, but it only goes up to point D now. Profit is the area left over. And I'm going to go ahead and actually kind of in, enclose that area. It's going to be this area on our graph is profit. Whoops, I went just a little bit too far right there. And so it's going to be the difference between the two, right? If the big box is the total revenue, we subtract the total cost. We're left with this area P2 to P5. I could have made this just a little bigger. Thanks, Daniel. A and D. And so it's just that area at the very top. You could have also kind of rewritten them in algebraic form. You could have said, um, if we if it didn't tell us use four points here or something like that, we could have written them algebraically. And there are different ways you can set that up. Consumer surplus. Well, we remember that consumer surplus is the difference between the price paid and willing to pay. And that's a good thing to remember is that's the difference between what you did pay and what you were actually willing to pay. And so if we did pay here P2, then the area that's above that price, kind of this shaded area right up here, all of that is our consumer surplus. And so the area of that is P1 to P2 over to point A. P1 to P2 over to point A. We could find the area of that if we were asked for a quantitative value, if we do some numbers here. And the last part is actually kind of a trick question, revenue maximizing quantity. So firms don't normally try to revenue maximize. That's the first thing to know. They almost always are just gonna to try to profit maximize. But we do wanna be able to interleave some of our concepts, which basically means taking a concept from one unit and applying it in another unit. And if we're thinking about revenue maximization, well, that occurs at unit elastic. That's where the point on the demand curve where marginal revenue of that unit would actually be equal to zero. And that's something, again, we talked about in the last in the last video. And that's right here at Q2. The point where marginal revenue hits zero is at Q2, and that is the revenue maximizing quantity. So again, this occurs when MR equals zero. It's also called the unit elastic point. And something we learned in the last video is that all the points kind of above that, like above this point B, all the way up to P1, all those points are in the elastic, elastic range of the demand curve, whereas all the points below point B on the demand curve all the way down are in the inelastic range.
Now let's take a look at the first part of an AP exam problem from, from a little while ago. It's about 15 years ago, so maybe it's getting, getting as old as you are in some cases. Uh, the graph at left shows demand cost curves of a firm that does not price discriminate. Now we're going to come back and learn later what that means. Um, but this says, suppose the firm produces a profit maximizing output. What's that level of output? What's that level of price? So here I'm going to look again where it is MR equal MC. And that's going to tell me the output. And then the demand curve is going to tell me the price. And so, sorry, I wrote that right there, MR equals MC. So I'm going to look at marginal cost and find marginal revenue. That occurs here at point H, but I don't want to use point H. I want to actually refer to a level of output, which is Q2. So we'll say A1, Q2. And then it says, what's the price? Well, A2 and close those in parentheses. I'm going to go up the up to the demand curve and see that that's at point B. But again, that is not a price, so I want to come over and see that P5 is the price where they actually profit maximize. So again, I'm first finding what is MR equal MC, determining that quantity, then going up to the demand curve and over. Now the last part says revenue maximizing, and that's why I included this question up here is because sometimes the AP people get cute with this. They throw in a question from a previous unit. So if we know that this occurs where MR equals zero, and we just talked about that, we can see that the marginal revenue curve crosses here at Q3. So B1, we're going to say is Q3. Now, if we were to produce that quantity, Q3, what would be the price that we would charge? We'll go up here to the demand curve, and we see that happens at part D, and that's a really, really tiny little arrow right there, but it's telling you that point D is at P3. And so if they were to want to revenue maximize, they would produce Q3 units at price P3. But hopefully this helped you. I'll see you next time.